Hello everyone, no respawns here. So, I had a couple of questions on a f um, one of my earlier videos in regards to ex exactly surviving winter. Now, see, with winter in RimWorld and to other survival games, it's generally the thing that makes or breaks most players. It was the same with Don't Starve, I mean, it, not really the same with the Long Dark because the entire thing is wi winter. But generally speaking, it is pretty difficult. It's the first real trial of you as, as, as the player. It's actually really simple, especially your first winter. You're going to be fine. You have to not panic. But let me just go over an overview of exactly what you need to do, how much food roughly you want stockpiled, and kind of some techniques and kind of just best practices is a better way of putting it. So firstly, as you can see, we're at Deliverance. Um, this is a another version. I like to restart my games and kind of redo bits, um, but I also liked my perfect start, so it is actually the same few people. Um, well, those three and then two new ones. But basically, so you see right here, um, in this instance, I've actually, very obviously, we're on the day 90 now. And what I've gone and done is I've really planned ahead. Um, I've actually built my entire colony because the main one was this part here. And then this was the extension. But I decided to just build all that because in my last one, I ended up having nine people centered around this area. I had this little solar area and I had another one there. But I just didn't, wasn't, was not producing enough food for that many people at all. Um, and what I wanted to do was like, right, okay, I'm going to have a turbo supply of food um, and get this really early on. Now I have way more food than I ever need right now. As you can see I've got 2,000, 2000 like in terms of vegetables I've got well over, well for my humans around 4,000 1,500 for my animals and around just shy of 2,000 meat. Now this is way more than you need so don't worry about it, especially for this many colonists. A lot of this will just get sold, go off potentially or just just stay in my five freezers, no, four freezers rather. Right, so first and foremost, when you start your game in the first few days, you want to, what I actually did, and you don't need this, don't do not do what I've done, you don't need to do that much, is you want maybe two farms. Um, each colonist eats roughly about 10 food per day. In this instance, I've got simple meals. However, mainly because I don't have anyone who can cook them, what you would ideally like to do is have someone cooking a fine meal. However, the problem is, is I need cooking six. The reason being is fine meal, basically they use the same amount of food as a simple meal, but it just uses half meat, half vegetables. Which is, it's generally a lot better because it also gives your colonists a little bit of an emotion boost and it's just, it's just better you know it keeps things a little bit more organized and just the emotion bit boost is the best part so what you want to be doing is generally speaking you will start in spring planting really early on i like to pick potatoes and corn but also you can throw some rice in there as well and making sure that you are trying to get two harvests in now that will cover you for the first first winter. The first winter is, to be honest, the easy one. You don't really need um, anything beyond those two farms. Now, beyond that, you do also want meat. So what you want to be doing, now what I used to do was I would actually collect all of my colonists, let's speed up a little bit, um, I would collect all of my colonists and actually get them, like manually take them out myself and just kind of wipe out herds like this. You know, I'd go over there and just wipe that one out, wipe that one out. To be honest, it's much, that's kind of makes it it's a bit more of a demanding thing to do, basically, and it's it's quite easy to forget to do it. So what I do is whenever an animal comes too close to my colony, I just select to hunt. I basically stick it so everyone is just hunting around the colony, not really going too far. It's quite easy, they'll pick it up, they'll take it back, and it's all grand. And that's how I've actually gotten most of this meat. Now, you want to be doing this up until pretty much the end of fall. Realistically, you don't want to be doing too much um, during winter because even though you're going to have lots of cold clothing, really, to be honest, if you haven't got this all stocked up before winter hits, you're going to have a little bit of an issue. Also, when winter hits, the animals will disappear. 
Um, I don't know if they, it's a combination of them getting eaten, but often them will just migrate out of the area. And what you'll end up being left with is a situation where you're just hunting down squirrels and the occasional turkey and actually hunting down the arctic wolves and the arctic foxes. So try and get, I mean for example, with these five colonists, I would want a thousand vegetables and a thousand meat and that would get me probably reasonably through winter without too much hassle. hassle. Excluding, for example, I, I would still be gathering food as I go, but I would want on the outset to have about 2,000 food. Um, for the four, I think I had about 1,500 roughly. So it, it's not really very much and often you can get, as you can see, mo I've got that in just pota raw potatoes. Now, it's not so much just your settlers who will also um, slow them down a little bit. It's not just your settlers you want to pay attention to, it's also your animals. Now, your, your starting dog or cat, whatever you get, is going to be an omnivore, so they can eat anything and they don't eat too much. I think, I don't know the exact amount, but it's not very much at all, so don't, I don't worry about them. But with my last save, and in this one I've actually bought them, um, but in my last save I actually had it where I had my three up, I have two up hackers now. Um, but I had three join my colony just in the middle of fall. Now, that, that was brilliant because alpaca wool is fantastic for making very warm clothes and they shed a lot of it. Same with this muffalo. He actually, I haven't tamed any of these. Um, and he joined my colony and I'm like, I was going to slaughter him originally. But I was like, no, milk and muffalo wool, get in. However, obviously that means that you might get a situation, which happened to me, where they, I ran out of food really fast so what you want to be doing is even if you don't have any animals i actually had a little square about this big so this is a five by five and i started cooking um growing hay grass straight away now i've got it so it's set in the growing area around my solar panels grow hay grass i might even not have enough i've got 1393 and to be honest i would want about 2000 just to be sure however i've got so many potatoes and corn and stuff that i should be fine so potentially you'd want maybe two of these so that one and that one say well to be honest what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to have another solar panel area and that should cover me for next winter and have enough hay grass to actually feed my animals throughout the entire season i'm not allowing myself to take on any more than this i'm going to sell any spare spare um alpacas and muffalo i get however there is an emergency and how, how i did it this is just for my animals um this won't help with any your actual settlers but animals are important because it, it's a bit disheartening when they die um and you know they're very useful as well is um where here i actually ended up having a hydroponics lab now what i did is i had it was just the pair i had about four or five of them uh, going for the plant is going and what I did is I allowed my animals in there and they would eat the growing plants. Now that was fine because all of my settlers were living off meat, but my alpacas and was well, my three alpacas were living off the growing plants and that was actually enough for them. Same as well for plant pots. If you have a few plant pots around, they can actually these ones here, plant pot, they can actually eat the growing plant. It's just as a useful emergency food so don't assume they're going to die as long as you have something like that some kind of vegetation for them to eat they will just push themselves through albeit very very slowly so that's your food and that's pretty much all you need you just need to make sure get about yeah basically per per colonist about five five hundred food would get you through winter quite comfortably well 300 350 to 500 but i would say 350 was the bare minimum 400 is the you know okay 500 you're pretty grand now clothing is not nearly as stressful i to us heat is probably harder to deal with than cold see with my people right here they've actually wearing dusters mainly because someone commented on one of my videos i'm um, sorry i don't remember your name but um i didn't say thank you as well but i did read it <laughs> um uh, the fact is that the parkers actually slowed them down by 20 percent so i don't wear parkers at all the only um kind of cold warm weather gear they're wearing is cloth toques, I don't know what they're called, beanies basically, so they're wearing beanies, including Lee actually, she's finally got around to putting one on, and 
yeah, that's all I have. But I make sure they have loads of clothing. So they basically they've got their full set. Um, eventually, I'm going to switch this over. Actually, you don't have any pants on, Chalice. All right, love. Um, but mostly they have pants on, <laughs> other than Chalice. However, I make sure that they all have the bear, basically every base covered. And what I do is I basically just cook the, um, make the amount. Um, a really useful thing to do as well is to specify exactly what you want it made out of. Now, I'm not too worried this instance, but what I'm going to be doing is, now I've got my alpacas, I'm actually going to make all of, and muffalo, I'm going to make all of my undergarments. So, um, my t-shirts and my pants and my beanie things. Um, out of wool, and I'll be making my dusters out of leather, just because it oh, well, leather looks cooler. Um, and that's a good thing to specify. Now, in terms of heating, and this is the final thing, really, um, it's actually really easy, to be honest. I mean, as long as you have sufficient power, as I said, I have my wind turbines over my farms. I haven't even got my geothermal set up. I've got four batteries, and I got this solar generator. My first power supplies I set up were these two. And then I got these two, and I, that pretty much covered me to the point where the few instances where I'd have, say, a solar flare, it wouldn't last long enough to really impact my colonists that much. And when I get this geothermal plant set up, I'm good to go. However, what you want to do is I have vents going between, so that way, one, I'm not draining my power too much, because before when I started, I had every single room had a heater in, and that's quite a large power drain. I mean, 175, that mounts up especially when you've got as well the coolers um, but if you have generally speaking these two one vent with one heater heats those two rooms comfortably however with this room it was starting to cool down a little bit because of the side so I put two vents and two heaters and that was pretty much it because I get most of my hunting and stuff done in the fall before winter starts or summer or spring summer and fall come winter even though people might disappear, um, I should have actually gone and found that. I'll find them later, it's fine. Even though people will be out of the colony for quite a while, because of the fact that these rooms are comfortably heated, they won't ever, at worst, they get minor, minor hypothermia. That's a very rare thing. That's only when I've been outside defending my colony. Anyway, I hope you guys found that useful. As always, follow me on Twitter, at no respawns. We'll see him up to. Give me a follow. See what I'm... I think I'm just about to hit 4,000 followers, so for the love of God, follow me. Um, and I'll have another Fallout video for tomorrow. You guys take care.